Porsche is holding the launch of the all-new Cayenne in Crete, Greece. We're in the middle of the Mediterranean on an island getting a chance to drive this all-new third-generation Cayenne. Let's get in, go for a drive. Well, how awesome is this being in Crete driving the all new Cayenne? Now let's get the performance out of the way because that's what everybody wants to talk about. What does this car have that's new? Well, it's got a lot of power and a quick vehicle, quicker on all levels. Now we'll start with the turbo. That's the one that gets the turbo name. However, all of the engines are turbocharged now. Top engine, 550 horsepower, four liter turbo in the top turbo model. And that'll make a run to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds. Down from that is the Cayenne S. It too gets a turbocharged engine. It's a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6. It's shared with Audi and co-developed with Audi and that engine gets 440 horsepower and that will make a run to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9 seconds. Then you get into the base model and that's the one that most people are going to be interested about because most people buy the base Cayenne. It's the biggest seller and it gets a 40 horsepower jump. It's a turbocharged 3 liter, same thing, co-developed with Audi and it's much improved in terms of performance. It makes a run to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.9 seconds. Now the Cayenne comes with more standard features as well. Standard LED headlamps, larger wheels. The base wheel is now 19 inches and they're staggered, meaning the rear wheels are wider than the front wheels and the track is a little wider as well, which gives you a better on-road stability. Also included in Cayenne, standard safety features, including forward collision warning with autonomous braking and pedestrian detection. You can also add on some extra features if your budget desires. There is so much new technology in this car. Because Porsche is owned by the Volkswagen Group, there's a lot of technology sharing now between brands, especially Audi. But they take the tools from the toolkit and they run away and they turn it into an Audi. And in this case, they turn it into a wonderful Porsche product. So it's not the same, even though they have the same basic tools, they tune it differently. I'll give you an example. On the top model, the turbo, you get the air suspension with electromechanical dampeners all running on a 48 volt system. What does that mean? Well, it means that this updates the Porsche Dynamic chassis control to give you much quicker dampening in the corners to stop pitch and roll, which is different from the way Audi uses it. Audi uses it to raise the car if it wants. Not the case with this. It still uses the air suspension to raise this Cayenne higher off the ground when you do go off pavement, which we did today in the turbo, and it was absolutely flawless going off road and a lot of fun to use. Now, when you get that system with the air suspension and the electromechanical chassis, you also add in rear steering, up to three degrees of steering turn in the back wheels, and it definitely makes a difference. Carving in the turbo through the mountains here in Crete has been an absolute blast, especially having 550 horsepower under your right foot. So it doesn't set a foot wrong. Now let's get into styling and size and what have you. This is slightly bigger. The wheelbase is a little bit longer. The length is a bit longer overall. However, it's a little bit lower and a flatter roof line to give it a slightly sexier look. What you get is a longer wheelbase and more cargo space in the back, about 100 liters more space for your cargo. But a lot of people are gonna say it doesn't look that much different. And you're probably right, and that's done intentionally. Porsche knows they have a hit on their hands and they want people to see this car and instantly say, that's a Cayenne. They probably could have gone a little bit further with the design, but this is the family choice now in the Porsche utility space. And I've owned one of these vehicles and it is a wonderful workhorse for a family. The biggest change of course is noticed from the back, you've got the light bar across the new tail lamps, and that is a tip of the hat to the new Panamera, but really to older Carreras that had that reflector bar across the back. So that's where you're gonna notice the changes the most. On the inside, they've kept the familiar, like the big grab handle, 
panels, which I love. But above that, you'll notice an all-new glass panel similar to the Panamera. This is going to be a fingerprint and dust magnet, but it's the way Porsche wants to go, activating their new 12.3-inch screen. And the screen really is bold and proud in the center of the car. So the bigger screen definitely looks fantastic. Also, behind the steering wheel, you've got a regular analog tachometer, but on either side, you've got seven inch programmable TFT screen. So that's the updated interior package. But the overall look and feel is similar to the previous car. You take those features out, you'd be hard pressed to know that this is the new model. And I think that's a good thing because it works and it has worked now for 16 years. Now I have one criticism because I'm an Android user. They only support Apple CarPlay. And I asked the people here, from Germany and they really didn't have a good answer. Well, not an answer that satisfied me, uh, but I just don't understand. They say most Porsche owners use Apple. Well, I've owned three Porsches and I use Android and I got a friend of mine in California. He's, he owns two Porsche Cayennes and he's an Android user, so I don't buy that argument. The other criticism for me is I think they could have tried a little bit harder with the styling on the outside. It looks a lot like the old model, except around the back. You'd be hard pressed from 100 meters to tell the difference, to be honest with you. But it's when you get behind the wheel and you experience these new power plants that are more powerful, especially the base model. There's no shame in owning a base model Cayenne now. This car has lots of get up and go. Now, as I mentioned, I've owned a Porsche Cayenne and I plan on getting another one. I've owned two Porsche sports cars, but I got to tell you, of all the vehicles I've owned, the Cayenne really was uh, the perfect combination of performance and utility, and it's a wonderful family vehicle. And this one just takes it to a whole different level. It's still got the heart of the sports car family under the hood and the way it drives but it has the everyday usability and utility that makes it a wonderful car to drive every single day. The big question, how much does a Cayenne cost? $75,000 to start with in Canada for the base V6 model, but you get so much more content now. A more powerful engine, larger wheels, standard advanced safety features, new high-tech interior. Then you can add on all of the different layers and technology depending on what your budget can sustain. This car really is dynamic to drive, especially when you get the electromechanical Porsche dynamic chassis control with the rear steering. It makes this car absolutely dance, and it did through the hills here in Crete. The other question, when is it arriving? Probably late summer 2018. Look for the all-new third-generation Cayenne.